Automated testing. It's a big topic. There are many different aspects of software that can be tested and different approaches that can be used to perform those tests. Each approach to testing has its own advantages and disadvantages. For this video, I want to focus on the approaches we can use to test software functionality and the challenges we will run into when we try to automate testing. Software testing can be broadly divided between functional testing and non-functional testing. The goal of functional testing is to ensure the software satisfies its business requirements. This could include user screens, integrations, user commands, or business processes. The goal of non-functional testing is to ensure the software you deliver provides a good user experience. Some examples of non-functional testing include performance testing, security testing, usability testing, and load testing. For the purposes of this video, I want to focus on functional testing. There are four types of functional testing that can be performed against a software product. Unit testing, integration testing, system testing, and acceptance testing. Unit tests are designed to test the smallest testable units of the software. This could be a method, class, or procedure that takes some input and produces some output. Unit tests must be able to run completely self-contained with no external dependencies such as databases or web services. Integration tests are designed to test multiple units, modules, or subsystems together. The goal of integration tests is to expose problems with the interaction of these components. Examples of integration tests would be validating the API or web interface of an application while connected to its database. System tests are designed to test the complete and fully integrated software product. Unlike integration tests, the application will be connected with downstream and upstream systems that we typically have less or no control over. An example of this type of testing might be an application that sends messages or files to a bank or accepts messages or files from a third-party application or website. The primary focus of system testing is to expose problems in the interaction between the application and the downstream and upstream systems. Acceptance tests are also designed to test the complete and fully integrated software product. The only difference between system tests and acceptance tests are its goal. The goal of acceptance tests is to validate the functionality of the software product from a user's perspective. Each approach to functional testing provides us with advantages and disadvantages. Unit tests are small, fast, and can be run easily from any machine, most importantly the developer's machine. Unit tests are primarily of interest to the developer. They are typically too technical to translate well to an end user. Integration tests allow us to test the interaction of the software's internal units. They do not test the interaction of internal units with external downstream and upstream systems, which in turn allows these tests to be run on any machine. In addition, integration tests provide a more functional view of the software than unit tests, which translates better to the end user. Because integration tests are not run in a fully integrated environment, they still lack some of the functionality an end user might expect to see in the final delivery of a software product. System tests give developers the first opportunity to observe a fully integrated software product with external peripheral systems. System tests can only be run in a fully integrated environment. This limitation makes these tests unavailable to the developer on his local machine. In addition, these tests tend to be time-consuming and are not as easy to repeat as unit and integration tests are. Acceptance tests give users the first opportunity to observe the fully integrated software product. Acceptance tests share all the same disadvantages of system tests. They are slow and difficult to repeat. Each functional testing approach presents unique challenges to implementing automation. Unit tests require our software components to be designed in a way that they can be executed without external dependencies present, such as a database, web services, or the browser. Unit tests are primarily the concern of developers. You must establish standards and guidelines for developers to write unit tests, otherwise they will not write them. In order to run integration tests, the system must be put into a state that it can be tested. This could include populating database tables, calling web services, or interacting with the browser. The source code responsible for putting the system into a testable state is known as the test fixture. Being able to effectively and efficiently write test fixture code 
is the biggest challenge and the key to automating integration tests. Automating system tests and acceptance tests will require an enterprise testing tool that can coordinate the software components and downstream upstream peripheral components. The test scripts developed in these tools are very fragile and sensitive to changes because they are so time consuming to run. Conclusions There are two types of testing that can be performed against a software product, functional and non-functional. We use four different approaches to functional testing because each approach brings its own trade-offs and automation challenges. Unit tests are inexpensive, run fast, and run anywhere. However, they do not translate well to the end user and they require software to be architected in a way that allows them to be executed. Integration tests provide a functional view of the software to the end user and can be run from anywhere. However, they are more expensive to set up and run than unit tests. System tests and acceptance tests provide a fully integrated look at the software product. However, automating these tests is extremely slow and fragile. At LifeOps, we use automated testing to deliver functional, stable software. We understand the challenges that arise from using automated testing, and we design our software to address these challenges head on. Thank you for taking the time to learn about LifeOps. If you enjoyed this content, please hit the like button, share this video, and subscribe to the LifeOps channel. If you have questions, please leave a comment below. I'm Jerome, and I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. Cheers.